<laughs> our next segment, you've been hearing about the Olympian stories that we've been talking about recently on the stream, and we got to cover them with a former Olympian by the name of Anthony Watson, who is also a member of Breaker Force, which we'll talk about during this interview. Uh, he is a skeleton racing Olympian, and he is a member of Breaker Force. We got to talk to him about his uh, initial reactions to these Olympian stories that have been coming out over the past couple of weeks. So I'm going to play that for you. Here we go. So I'm sure all of you guys have been hearing the crazy stories that are happening regarding the Olympics and a couple activist Olympic athletes that have been coming out recently. But today we are joined by one of our Prager Force members, Anthony Watson, who's actually a former Olympian, to talk about these issues. Anthony, could you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background as an Olympian? Well, thank you guys so much for having me. My name is Anthony Watson. I competed in the 2018 Winter Olympics and am currently training right now for the Winter Olympics of 2022 in Beijing and 2026 in Milan, Italy. So I do a sport that's called skeleton. It's when you lay on your stomach going head first about up to 85 miles per hour down the same ice track as the uh, bobsleds and luge athletes go on. But our sport's actually the safest one. We're actually four inches off the ice. So if you fall, you don't really have much I don't really have much ground to cover. You tip over in a bobsled, you have 600 to 800 pounds of carbon fiber and steel that pin your neck to the ice. So, you know, it's a, it's a dream. Oh, my sounds goodness. Sounds so scary. <laughs> that sounds I, terrifying. I'll stick to badminton. <laughs> <laughs> that hey, have you ever been hit by a badminton? Those those players Good literally, words. when it crosses no, the net, little... they can make it hit about 200 MPH. <laughs> that little birdie? like I think That, I little, birdie that little birdie can hit up to 200 plus. Someone getting hit in the eye with one of those little birdies. I mean, you should wear oh, protective gear when that's you play horrible. badminton. I mean, the last thing I think of when I think of any Olympic sport is safe. So <laughs> I'm good. I'll just pass on all of it. I'm not going to pick a preferred one. <laughs> uh, but Anthony, you've had your own sort of a cancel culture experience throughout your duration as being an athlete and an Olympian. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I mean, like like anybody that's experienced cancel culture, it was because I took a stand to actually be patriotic. Um, so now, I'm born, USA born, so I'm as American as they get, but I have dual citizenship to Jamaica, so I competed for Team USA back in 2012 to 2015, didn't make it to the Sochi Games, and then didn't really like the politics of the team that were in there that favored athletes over the other. So I left on peaceful terms and I have dual citizenship to Jamaica. So I competed and actually made Olympic history, but that's not really spoken of much as the first ever Jamaican athlete to compete in the sport of skeleton on an Olympic level. But I got abused so bad by the Jamaicans and that kind of debunked the whole white privilege nonsense because I suffered a lot of some the most traumatic abuse from other black people. And so I then, during the Olympics, got recruited by the Puerto Ricans because I'm half Hispanic. And so when everything was coming on with Trump and everything, my Instagram, my social media is very, like, politics neutral. You know, I'm somebody that has my beliefs, but, you know, I was never really, like, out there um, as, like, a MAGA and, like, all this other stuff like a lot of people are. I mean, like, I am at heart, but I mean, like, for the sake of my Olympic career, I kind of kept everything neutral. I went to SAS last year, December. And all I did was post a photo that said that I was there for a turning point event. And then, you know, it was kind of like a domino effect of a long uh, chain of unfortunate events. Uh, coming back, I caught COVID and was out for two weeks. And then while dealing with COVID, one by one, every single sponsor that I had started emailing me, reaching out to me, saying, due to your dangerous ideologies, due to your radical beliefs, due to your extreme like thinking and your dangerous thought process and stuff, you know, we're dropping you, we're not gonna work with you anymore. And all the money that we've given you that you've spent on stuff, we want that back. And so, oh, no. um, but for professional reasons, I've kept them quiet because in my personal experience, when you dog sponsors like that, especially when in the Olympics, when you don't get paid to do anything, um, we have to raise all the money ourselves through sponsorships, donations, or crowdfunding. And um, when you throw one sponsor under the bus, other sponsors get a little nervous and edgy that if things don't go your way, you're going to just complain and do the same thing. So it's been difficult to keep a cap on it, but there's going to be a storybook out someday and... It'll have all the dirty laundry in there. <laughs> I'm sure that it will. But it's great, man. It's awesome that despite the hate and despite the backlash, you're like, I'm not I'm not standing down. I'm going to continue to stand up for my beliefs no matter what. That's a very admirable thing, especially someone in your position who, just like you said, is taking these things all by donations or crowdfunding, things like that. Speaking of people who aren't proud to be Americans, people working right. or in the Olympics right now, you got this Gwen Berry chick coming on and saying that the national anthem disrespects black people and she doesn't want to look up to the flag when it's actually playing. What do you think about that? And what is the the thought process, I guess, of a lot of the other athletes that you see in America as well? 
Well, like, to her as an Olympian myself, she doesn't deserve anything on the Olympic stage. You know, when I was an Olympian and, you know, like, I would kill to be where she is right now. Not literally. I can't, I guess I can't really say that. <laughs> but I would do anything to get to be able to be where she is because there's a deeper sense of pride that comes when you aren't just representing yourself, but you speak for your nation. And to be honest right now, all countries laugh at America. All of this stuff is making America a laughing stock and more embarrassing to be a part of than it is actually proud. And for somebody to take the stand like that when you are representing your country, you're actually speaking for more people that can't speak for themselves. And as somebody who looks like I do and is an athlete myself and an Olympian, it's embarrassing for me to see something like that because you're using that stage for the wrong reasons. You're using it more for your own image and what you want to do because guaranteed, she placed third in US trials. Now I study athletes and I know the Olympics very well. Third place in American trials is roughly about ninth to like 15th place in the world Olympic stage with all the athletes coming from Europe, all the other athletes coming from Asia. And if she's taking this stance now, even if she doesn't do well, then it's gonna turn into, oh, well, they set me up at trials. Then it's gonna be like, oh, because I'm black, I didn't get enough time to warm up before they called me to do my event and they didn't want me to succeed so they gave this person another advantage it's just like there's too many un there's too many unwritten variables that this could go and to be honest like the olympic stage doesn't need that they don't deserve any of that and that shouldn't be something that gets any attention in my honest opinion and if she's talking about if she's saying that because i'm black it was saying if this does happen because i'm black that i didn't get enough time to warm up it's like you realize there are other countries in the world where there are black people right are all of the people from nigeria and eritrea and all these other countries also not getting enough time to warm up or is it just the black people in america it doesn't really make much sense no i mean like you should see like there like a lot of people i'm pretty sure everyone's heard like rumors of what the olympic village is like it's true it's a big party at sometimes but um overall i mean like before everyone's events it's like campus on finals week everyone is lasered they're focused everyone's trying to make sure that they get to bed on time they're at training when they need to be before competition and so what this has done this whole narrative of being black and american that's an american issue that now everyone's trying to use everywhere that if you don't get what you want if you don't get what you need if you don't have the things done in the way that you want it to it's only because that you're black and you made a good point well it's just like look there are black people everywhere else that are like outdoing you so what's your excuse <laughs> that it's going to come exactly. down to a lot of unwritten things that just don't make sense <laughs> Yeah, and we have actually one more story to talk about with you today. And it's really interesting to see the comparison of you not even really coming out as a conservative or posting anything that was politically polarizing, but just saying that you went to a conservative event and then subsequently being canceled. While we have athletes here, like this article that I'm going to show you, U.S. Olympic athlete Chelsea Wolf threatened to burn flag on the podium. And this is a BMX freestyle rider who is also a trans woman competing in the Olympics who says that her goal is to get up on the podium and to burn the United States flag. So something like this is allowed, yet you posting that you went to a conservative Turning Point USA event is somehow uh, detrimental to the United States Olympics. Well, the U.S. Olympic Committee has now done a thing where they try to give athletes the freedom to protest and it's protected to a certain amount. But when you see things like that, that has no place in the olympic spirit because the whole point of being an olympian is to make the world a better place through education through sport and by leadership and by example and it's like everything that you see in the olympic statement is doing everything with excellence and so when i see things like that those aren't athletes those are people that just want a little spotlight and for themselves and it's gaslit by all of this stuff and it's fed by fear that if anyone says anything different now if i were to say if i and i publicly condemn that everywhere and instead of it being like oh that's one athlete talking sports with another athlete i was called a transphobic and so mm -hmm. because people don't want to be labeled certain things and have people target them and come after them they're just like oh well I, you know it, it is what it is and they just turn a blind eye to it it's just like look i had my life taken away like my sponsors were covering my rent they were covering my bills they were covering everything i needed to so that i could you know train full time and not have to worry about anything when all that got taken away i was living in my car for about a month 
until I got my, until I, you know, was able to get myself back home to like be with my family and to kind of get myself back on my feet again. Now I'm still training, you know, and it's just like, when I see things like that, people like that come from an entitled mentality where they want to be as extreme as possible because to say anything, otherwise you can turn it into your racist, you can turn it into your homophobic, your transphobic. And then the minute people hear those kinds of things, you know, they think well, my social media is going to get shut down. You know, like I'm going to have everything taken away. So it's better for me to just not say anything and hope for the best, but it's just like, no, it's just like at this stage, nobody on social media is safe. Nobody in the world is safe because the minute you have anything contradictory to popular opinion, you know, like the left wants to come after you and try to like, you know, punish you in a silence. And it's just like, I feel more free now that I've been canceled because now I can say whatever without the fear of having to like be worried about losing any endorsements. So, so go, go ahead finish no i was just saying it's just like look beijing is coming up nobody really knows how that's gonna go down because with everything with covid and china and all this other stuff but you know i'm training every day so that i can stay ready so that i don't have to get ready but when i go back and i will be back i don't know when but i want to go back and i want to win you know i want to show people that it's just like it's not about complaining i'm not going there in the name of blackness i'm not going there in the name of like you know oppression i'm going there for people that feel those things to know that through hard work discipline and good choices you know you can become anything you want to be that's the beautiful thing about america is that that american flag stands for opportunity and as long as you're willing to put the work in you can become anything that you put the work in to become now everyone's being told that if you complain loud enough you scream long enough and you tantrum uh loud enough people will just give in to you and that's working but everyone has a cap and nobody has the nobody has the 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 wallet to keep up with everybody's demands and so now it's coming down to actually like are you actually going to like do something but people like that bmx rider people like that you know like uh gwen Berry, it's like they're like athletes like that they come and go there's been olympics throughout history where you've had people that have been outspoken about certain things and then when they get to the world stage they choke and it's actually like you have people celebrating that and it's just like that's also not what you're supposed to do you're not supposed to hope for the demise of people you want to support and it's just like the beautiful thing about the olympics is that no matter what war was going on what was happening in the world for those three weeks that the olympics were on the world was at peace because everybody was always cheering for their countrymen but now it's like now that you brought politics into it now the war is now reached <laughs> now the war's reached the olympics and you see it here also don't forget about that trans athlete that weightlifter Right, who was exactly. in there. What is the Olympics nowadays? It's funny that you say the uh, uh, for Chelsea Wolf. It's like I'm gonna light the flag on fire. No, don't light the flag on fire. Oh, what are you transphobic? It's like what is that? <laughs> exactly. How does that's literally that that's literally what the show. argument became. <laughs> It doesn't. Yeah. So we have Chelsea Wolf, we have Gwen Berry, and we have Laurel Hubbard, the weightlifter that you referenced. So. Oh, uh, the U.S. Olympics is basically it's over. It's over. We, we. I hope not. I love the Olympics. I love watching those those tall people on the hurdles. Because <laughs> it's something I could never do. It's I'm just, one for like I love amazing. the gymnasts in the summer Olympics and I love the figure skaters in the winter. Yeah. Oh, I come from track and field. Track and field was my first love and soccer was my second. So it's just like that's that's what I really love watching. But I mean like, what as a kid. From the young age of six, when I saw all of those athletes walking in, carrying the flags of the countries that they came from, that was something at the young age of six that I told my parents. I said, look, I want to be there someday. I tried in track and field, had a very serious knee tear that kind of kept me from sprinting. But then when I looked, did my research, found that bobsled and skeleton was the only Olympic sport at the time that took tryouts. So I was like, well, this looks like this is my in. And I <laughs> stuck with it for the past eight years you know, was able to not only go to the Olympics, but make history making it. And now I'm hoping to go back and make history again as the first athlete to represent two small countries that have never been to an Olympics before. And I mean, like, it's hard, but it's not impossible. But I always think it's funny because, you know, I always know that when people are doing these things for selfish reasons, they always eat themselves alive. Like Laurel Hubbard, mm -hmm. that weightlifter, he lacerated a testicle in training. So I'm just like, hmm, I was like, testicles Ouch. women's weightlifting yeah. i was like this is really just becoming a joke now i'm like <laughs> no her testicles are really damaged okay <laughs> it's it's horrible for her i can't believe it well anthony we're really excited to see what you go on to do i think it's an amazing thing that you're going to be one of the first athletes hopefully to represent two small countries in the olympics and you are also i want to point out to everybody watching a member of prager force so if you are a high schooler a college student or a young professional like anthony watson here and you are conservative and like-minded and you want to find people who share that sentiment with you you can join prager force by going to pragerforce.com yes you can amala and i both started out in prager force yep and now we're in the olympics <laughs>
But Anthony, thank you so much for joining and talking to us. You give a really unique perspective to this. It's very rare that you get to talk to an Olympian, especially with all the issues happening right now. So thank you for being on our program. No, thank you guys so much. This has honestly been a dream of mine. So I mean, like, I'm happy to be a part of Prager Forest. And anybody that's wanting to sign up, it's easy, quick, and simple. All you have to do is just be three things. You have to be someone who loves America, respects traditional values, and someone who's always willing to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. Pretty simple. Awesome. Thank those you so are, much, Those Anthony. are the three best things you could have said. <laughs> we didn't pay him to say this, too. That we was did really not good. compensate him. <laughs> we appreciate you, Anthony. Thanks so much for being on. We'll see you again Thank you sometime. guys so much. Appreciate Thanks. you guys.